And I'd like to welcome everybody to Exodus 33. I want to read two scriptures from it. Exodus 14, Exodus 33, 14 and 15. This is Moses talking and he said, and this is God talking. He said, my presence shall go with thee and I will give thee rest. And he said unto him, if thy presence go not with me, carry us not up hence. We're here to have church. I started this year off telling God, you don't come to church with me. I ain't going to church. Don't take me. Don't take me to church if you ain't going to visit us. I got good news. Where two or three are gathered together in his name, there he is in the midst of them. And he's come to visit. His presence come to visit. Why don't we entertain him? So my needs will be met. You are still my healer, though I can't see it yet. I will still gonna praise you, and I won't forget. my mind I won't forget who you are won't you raise your voice sing it you are still my provider so my needs will so be met my needs will be met you're still my healer you are still my healer oh, I can't see oh, I it yet. can't see it yet. I am still gonna and I'm praise still gonna praise you, you. Did you sing it? You're still my provider. You are still my provider. He's my provider. So my needs, so my needs will everyone be will be met. You are still and he's my, my healer. healer. There's no sickness he can't oh, I cure. Can see it I am still going to praise I'm you. I'm going to praise you. And I won't forget who you are. I'll never forget. I won't ever forget who you are. Who you are, you have. You have not stopped me in God. You never stopped in God. I have not stopped trusting you. I still 
trust you. I trusted you then, and I trust you today. I just stop praising you now. I'm praising you now. I'm praising you now. Because I know. Because I know what you can do. A healer. What sickness did you bring healer. in this house? No, I can't see. He's the healer. I am still I'm so gonna praise him. To praise you. I'm gonna praise him. And I won't forget who you are. I won't forget who you are. Never forget who you are. Who you are. Who you are. Now. Now, come 
up. Oh. Do you have a reason to dance? Before we get to the next song, some people's reason to dance is the beat of the drum. I wonder if your reason's deeper than the beat on the drum. I wonder, have you been baptized in Jesus' name and all your sins washed away? Has God filled you with the Holy Ghost? Did he bring your family in? I think we ought to praise him with no music to show the reason is deeper than the music. I don't dance because of a beat. I dance because of the Holy Ghost. I dance because of the gospel. Come on, that's right. You ought to join up with somebody. Find somebody to worship with. God's been good to me and you. God's been good to us. Oh, 
brother Jay so I can be. Come on. Praise ye the Lord. Praise him in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him in for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the sultry and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with the stringed instruments and organs. Praise him with the loud cymbal. Praise him on the high sounding cymbal. Let everything that has breath praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah.
about Jesus. Come on, I wonder if you could bless him. Hey man, we're gonna try something real, real quick. This is this is all blessing his name. This is an easy part of the song. Bless his name, bless his name. We're gonna split into states. You ready? Hey man, I'm gonna get it started, but I want Oklahoma to start it. You ready, Oklahoma? Did you come to bless his name? Or did you come to listen to a concert? Bless his name, bless his name. Let everybody come and bless him. One more time, Oklahoma. Bless his name. Let every come on, Utah. I want to hear you, Utah. Did you come to bless him? With your heart. Washington, get ready. Bless his name. Come on, Washington. We brought our praise to Wyoming. Bless his name. Bless his name. Come on, Oregon. Bless his name. Bless his name. Come on, Oregon. Bless his name. Bless his name. Wyoming, are you here? Come on, Wyoming. Everybody. Bless his name. Bless his name. Let everybody. All the states. Bless his name. Bless his name. Bless his name. With your heart. Bless his name. Let everybody come in. Bless his name. Bless his name. Bless his name. You ought to get all of you. Break through. Bless his name. Bless his name. Bless his name. Let's bless him. Come on, lift your voice. Hallelujah, you came all this way. Come on, you can say, the Bible says praise is comely. You can stand there and smile and laugh, but praise is what will fix your problem. Praise is what will fix the situation. You stand there bound up, it's obvious. The devil's got you. You need to open your mouth and crank it out. Bless his name. Come on, lift it. Bless his name. Bless his name. Come on, sing it. Bless his name. Bless his name. Come on, open your mouth, boys. You girls. You wonder why you got a problem with porn? Why you got a problem with the other issues? You got to bless his name. Come on, what's why you to get the spirit? Trying to hold back pray. I've been fighting too much. You got to open your mouth. Bless his name. Come on, open your mouth. How about you do it? Come on, bless his name. Bless his Hallelujah. Name. Bless his name. Hallelujah. Let everybody Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Bless his name. Bless his name. Bless his name. Hallelujah. Let everybody come Thank you, Jesus. Bless his name. 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 Oh, hallelujah. Let everybody come on. Bless his name. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your voice to him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah! Praise God. Are you glad to be here? Some of you don't look like you even want to be here. You don't scare me. We've been fighting too many devils for me to be scared. Praise God. Everything you need is right here. Well, I'm wore out. You don't understand. Okay. I, I'm not God neither. Don't praise me. Praise God. Hallelujah. You can be seated. It's tight in here, but that's all right. We're running fans trying to cool it down. It's just part of it. I'm thankful for every one of you that come. This is a fellowship meeting. 
and I'm thankful for all the folks from all the states that have showed up. And I'd like the, the local pastors to step up um, up here and come and speak. No, you're not supposed to preach. If you feel it, you can preach for two minutes. Otherwise, we'll be here till one in the morning. And Brother Bo's got to preach, and he's got to leave tomorrow, and so we don't want to make him stay up all night. I might do it anyways. <laughs> Praise God. But um, where's Brother Diaz? Brother Diaz, why don't you start it off? Brother Bauer, Brother Dominguez, you guys get ready. You can even come up here and stand if you want. Pat him on the back. But this is a fellowship meeting, Brother Crush. Why don't you come up too? These, this is, come on, all you guys come up here. Come on, Brother Bauer. Elder, you can, you're right up here. You can just stand right there. I'm going to show you something. It takes a church. We got to have people. But this, the dude standing on this platform is who's fighting hell for your soul. That's them. Brother Johnson, he, Brother Greg, where are you at? Come on up here. He's, he's involved in the Ogden church. Yeah, I told him I'd call him up here, so now he can't back out. His dad said he'd even spank him if he had to. I'm just kidding. Oh my. This is who's standing before hell for you. We put this meeting together because I want to help and I want to be a support. And we've got a fellowship. And all these men are important. If it wasn't for them answering a call, you probably wouldn't be here. And the Bible says give honor where honor is due, and I think it's appropriate. Let's give these men a hand clap for their commitment and their devotion to the King of Kings. Praise God. I want each one of them to say something, and so they can just kind of file in as they want. Brother Diaz, you start. Praise the Lord, church family. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm so glad to be here with the church. Amen. Celebrating another anniversary service with the Leckenbees. Um, we become really good friends over the past couple years. Amen. I respect the Leckenbee family and the work that God's doing through them in this city. Amen. You are blessed. This local assembly, you are a blessed church. Amen. For men that love truth, that stand for holiness. Praise God. I love God tonight. Amen. There's such a wonderful atmosphere of the Holy Ghost in this place. No telling what God can do for somebody if you, you reach out in faith tonight. Come on now. Somebody believe that tonight? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I got our young people all hyped up. Uh, praise God. There's a few of our young people that we've been praying and pushing and saying, God, we want to see them filled with the Holy Ghost. This, tonight's the night for you to get the Holy Ghost. Amen. Such an opportunity for you to get the Holy Ghost tonight. Amen. It's the greatest thing that you'll ever experience on this wor in this world, in this life. Amen. If you haven't received the Holy Ghost, what are you waiting for? Oh, taste and see that the Lord, he is good. Praise the Lord. I love the Lord tonight. Look forward to seeing what God has in store. Praise the Lord. Oh, praise God. Well, thank you very much, brother, that can be put in by us. We really enjoy this fellowship. I really, uh, we were talking um, about praising the Lord, the power that we have when we come together. And uh, I'm looking forward to see what God is going to do in this service. I really, it is beautiful what you can feel. And things can happen, healings. Uh, what do you need? What is your request? Sometimes you just need to speak and say, hey, Lord, I need this. We need to step up in faith. But this is beautiful env environment. Thank you very much for what you're doing. And um, I appreciate for your invitation. Praise God. Amen. It's good to be here. It's exciting to be here. You know, the Bible talks about how, was it, God said he inhabits the praise of his people. Amen. And so when you see a lot of people and they're praising God, yeah. it's just really wonderful. Yeah. And every good and perfect gift cometh from, from God, yeah. right? And we know there's no variableness, none. What does that mean? That means that it doesn't matter if it's a spirit of homosexuality. It doesn't matter if it's a spirit of alcoholism. It doesn't matter if it's addictions of any kind, stealing, whatever. God can do something in your life. 
and the devil wants to try to squash you down tonight, but I'm going to tell you, if you keep the faith and you hold up, I'm going to tell you there's something for you at the end of this service. The Bible says, so faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. So what we want, we want faith. Amen. We want to believe that tonight because the addictions can be gone. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, I just can't imagine how frustrating it must be for the devil to try everything that he can. He can try to cause confusion, chaos. He can try to do everything that he can. But in the midst of him doing that, he still remembers the heritage that says no weapon formed against me shall prosper. And I just can't imagine how frustrated he is tonight knowing he tried everything he can. But devil, what God wants to happen is still going to happen in this service. The words that God wants spoken is still going to be spoken in this service. The things that God wants broken is still going to be broken in this service. Devil, take that. Nothing you can do is going to stop it tonight. I almost just went and went and just sat down. That was, amen. I'll tell you what, I'm just going to keep on. I'm going to, I'm going to piggyback off everyone else. Talking about faith, what God can do. You know, and, that, and that's the thing. You know, sometimes we think it's so hard for God to answer, do the miraculous. And it's not hard for God to do the miraculous. It's very easy for God to do the miraculous. All we have to do is we just have to believe. That's it. I'm going to get a mustard seed. I'm going to keep it in my wallet. Because that's all you that's all you gotta have. All you gotta say is, God, I believe that you can help me in my situation. I believe that you can help me out of this predicament. It could be depression. It could be anxieties. Uh, another brother already, already said a bunch of stuff. I'm not going to go into it. But whatever your need is tonight, God can answer it. Otherwise, why is he God? It does not matter what it is. God can answer it. Even this past week, I, I got, he said I got two minutes. I'm a preacher, so I'm, I'm going to make sure I got my two minutes. We, had a, we have a lady that we baptized just a couple weeks ago, and she struggled with depression. She struggled with anxieties, high blood pressures, fear, uh, just a bunch of them, just a mess since her childhood. And we prayed over her, baptized her. She texted me the other day, and she said, she said, Pastor, I have never dealt with depression ever since you prayed. It, it, it didn't take medication. It did not take her going to the doctor to say you don't you no longer uh, deal with depression. All she said, you know, I don't have that cloud over my head anymore. I don't have that stuff. Why? What is it? What, what's the what's the antidote? What's the answer? Is Jesus Christ? If you if you come unto Him, He'll answer your need, if you're willing, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. I love these guys. We're becoming great friends. And I want Brother Eric Johnson, he's the elder in the area. He's a pastor of all these guys, so I had him go last. That way, if he wants to yell at them all, he can. Oh, thank you, Brother. No, I don't do that. We, uh, we have a great group of men, and, and uh, God's church is a beautiful church. God's church is a wonderful. God's people are wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And I do want to uh, give honor today to your pastor here in this local assembly and give honor to this local church. I'm just going to tell a little bit and uh, just what, what I have seen in the last uh, few months. We met together sometime last year. Don't ask me the date. It was last year. Praise God. And we, we just got together and we said, you know what, what do, we, what do we need to do as far as some outreach? And uh, what we did is we began to reach out together uh, we all ordered door hangers and tracks or door hangers and, and contact information. And uh, week by week, we met all the way from uh, there was a crew that went out to Rollins to help the crushes all the way over to Logan. And if I believe all the way down to Grand Junction and. Yeah, well, that, that was that, that was what we covered. All of that it told was, uh, it was close to 6,000, uh, 6,900, <laughs> close to 7,000 uh, doors knocked on or, or hangers done. And I want to commend this church because I'm, I'm here to tell you, this church here, 
was in on every single outreach. Praise God. I, 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 I'm happy about that. Amen. I walked in the door, and the Lord just dropped a verse in my mind. That verse that says, we walk by faith and not by sight. I praise God and thank God for the men of this area and all over, all over from Washington to uh, Oklahoma and all over Oregon, uh, all the way. I thank God for men that have a vision and yet aren't swayed by what they see. Praise the Lord. You know what? If you're, and, and I want to encourage some here tonight because you know what? The Lord just laid it on my heart and said there are some that, you know what? There was every possible reason for you not to come here tonight. If you would have just listened, there might have been some family problems. There might have been a money problem. There might have been a flat tire. A, a, you know, something, something came up. But the Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. We're not walking because of what we see. We're walking because of who we know. Amen. I'm here to tell you God is a good God. And God's people are good people. Amen. And God wants to do something in this service tonight. Amen. Aren't you glad to be here tonight? Praise the Lord. If you came with a need tonight, tonight's your night. You need to make some claim here and say, you know what? Man, I fought all the hell to get here. Praise God. My son drove us here. I'm telling you, you don't know what I fought to get here. We was like flying close to the ground. Amen. No, I'm, I'm just happy to be here. Amen. Can we just lift up our hands and love the Lord one more time tonight? Jesus, we love you. We love you. Amen. Well, you can be seated. How many has God been good to? Amen. God's been good to me. I don't know about you, but when I think about the goodness of Jesus... Amen. It makes me want to dance. It makes me want to shout. You might say those people are crazy. No, you should have seen us 10 years ago, five years ago. If you, if you would have seen us in the dark, my repents. Amen. You would have known. You, you, you know why we're up here praising and giving God the praise that he's worthy of. I, 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 I feel like I've, I've got to say this to the church because uh, and to everyone represented here, because it, it, it seems like everyone's been saying whatever you need, amen, God can supply. And I believe that. I really do believe it. But the book of Mark chapter 2, verse 1 through verse 6 says, And again he entered into Capernaum after some days, and it was noise that he was in the house. Who was in the house? Jesus. And straightway many were gathered together in so much that there was no room to receive them. It's packed in here. It's packed. It's Man, I, I, I was sitting up here and I uh, God showed me a vision and he said, this is how I want my church to be like. I don't care if you're running 15 people, 25 people, the devil's a liar. This year is about to change. You're going to fill up the building you're in, the building God will give to you and you're we're going to have revival. I don't know about you, but I'm excited about what God's going to do. And in, you, you may be seated. In, in the same chapter, there was a man that was sick of palsy. And the Bible says that when they tried getting him into the door, it was full. It was packed. But his friends were so desperate, and this man was so desperate that they cut a hole in the roof. Let me tell you something. This is what God gave me. This place can be packed, but the only ones that are leaving changed are the ones that are desperate. I don't know if you heard me, but we can have a hundred or so people in this place but brother, if you want revival for your church, you've got to get desperate. You need a healing. You've got to get desperate. You need God to break some chains. You've got to get desperate. And I said all of that to say this. I'm going to take up an offering. 
Amen. Your pastor asked me to. and uh, It's my first time ever doing it. But I'll tell you a quick story. Uh, your pastor came and he, he preached a message about giving in, at, at our church. And in that message, uh, I, I, I was telling myself, I was like, man, uh, I don't know if we can ever meet uh, the needs of the church. I, uh, because I work with a lot of people that have come from the islands and you've got to teach them. And they're good people. I'm thankful for them. But I was like, man, I don't know if we can reach our goal. And he got up and he said, you, you just give. And uh, that night, I believe we, my wife's back there, I think we raised about $17,000 just that night. But here's how desperate people got, because your, your pastor, Brother Leckenby, Pastor Leckenby preached this. And I had a man there that just received his income taxes, has five children. Uh, they just got kicked out of their house. Uh, got their car uh, repossessed, and uh, they were just living a tough life, a rough life. And in that service, that brother gave about, how, how much money did he give? $9,500? In that service, he gave every single penny of his income tax to the church. And I didn't know at the time that they tried getting places to live and people would turn them away because their credit was bad. They were about $18,000 in debt. But he gave that. He gave it. And Pastor Leckenby, he, he got up and he said, just do it. God will bless you. And this man did it, Brother Angie Luther. He did it. And the next week, he called me up and he said, Pastor, I'm fixing to move into a new place. And to me, it, it was like, I, I, I was like, okay, you're moving to a new place. And he said, no, you don't understand. My credit was bad. And I was about $18,000 in debt. But when I woke up this morning, all $18,000 was gone. And my credit score went up. What am I trying to tell you? There's nothing better that you can invest in than in the kingdom of God. How desperate are you for a move of God? Hey, I, I feel the spirit of unity in this place. Every single man that came up, every single man of God that was up on this platform earlier, man, I, 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 I want to take this back home to where I come from. Because there's unity, there's power. But how desperate are you to fill up this building, the next building, and keep having revival until God comes back? I don't know about you, but I'm not going to settle for a thousand. I've had, I've had three preachers, if not four preachers, tell me, uh, uh, Brother Milena, your church is going to run over a thousand people. I, when I get up and I preach to the people at Spokane Lighthouse Church, I tell them, I want 2,000 people. You know why? Because God's coming back soon. And boy, I'm desperate for a revival in the last days. Hey, the greater days are not be the greatest days of revival are not behind us. They're in front of us. And so as we all stand, how desperate are you? This is a full house. But the only people getting a blessing are the ones that are desperate. We, it's a confirmation from the Holy Ghost. Every man that has come up here, have, they've said, whatever you need, God can supply. Well, God's put the ball in your court. He, he's ready to, to supply the need. But what are you willing? Now, I told my church this. It's not a matter of when God's going to do it. It's a matter of when do we want him to do it. How many wants revival? I want revival. And so I, it's my first time taking up an offering. What, whatever they've got planned. You got music. All right, they sing. And there's a basket up here. And you can bring, give unto the Lord. The Bible says don't come empty-handed to the house of God. And so everyone in this place, if you need a blessing, hey, take my word for it. I've seen it happen time and time again. 
just give unto the Lord. Amen. The Lord loveth a cheerful giver. Amen. As they give us this song, why don't we bring our offer? thankful. Uh, Brother Andrew Bob, he's from Ottawa, Oklahoma. I asked him if he wanted to speak. He said no. But he's the pastor there in Ottawa. He's my friend, and I thank him. Wave your hand there, Brother Bob. He's a good man, and he's building a fast-growing church. You start winning Marshallese people, that's like fishing with a net. They just swim right in. White folks is hard to win. We're stuck up, and I'm white folks. I know. It ain't racist. That's just it is what it is. <laughs> Praise God. I'm thankful that he's here. Brother Josh Manene, the song leader, he's the pastor in Eden, Oklahoma. He's my family, and I love him. And I'm thankful. For, they, they have a bus out there. They're trying to get run, and we found a cheap bus for their church. They're growing. They have lots of people, and they needed a bus, and God impressed us. And It's just this Wyoming cold weather. 
makes diesels hard to run. And so if you don't know what that means, go learn it. Move to a church or start a church somewhere in Wyoming. Don't buy a diesel. And brother, Pastor Matthias Menene, who just took up the offering, I thank you for being here. It means a lot. They, a lot of these folks drove 15 hours to get here. I'm thankful for them, and I'm thankful that, that you're here. And then we have a couple elders, Marshallese uh, men that are elders. Brother Milton LeBach, men, wave your hand there, sir. He's from Legrand. And if any of you guys want to win Marshallese in your city and fill your church up in like two months, well, you got to call his pastor first because he's not his boss. His pastor's his boss, who's my pastor, and so I'll try to sell him for him. He's probably busy enough as it is. And then Jim Tulio in the back. Wave your hand there, Brother Tulio. That's uh, these two guys on the platform, Dad. He's a, he's a real-life missionary. He went to the Marshall Islands and he started to work. And Where's Sister Charlene? Wave your hand, Sister Charlene. Can you wave it high so people can see? Turn around and look at her. Her husband and her are pastoring the church in the Marshall Islands. And I can't remember what town. Wadja? In Wadja. And she's here and her husband's home and he's probably wanting her home. But she's spending time with her family. And so it just is what it is. I'm thankful. They're here. We, we ought to give them a hand clap for coming here and being with us. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm thankful for Sister Deathridge being here yesterday. Or no, it's today is her birthday. So we're thankful for her being here on her birthday. Her husband's thankful. He don't like to travel around very much without her. But I'm thankful Brother Bo Deathridge is here, and I want him to come. God put this together. I'll tell you a secret about him. He was kind of fighting the will of God. I'm just kidding. I called him. I texted him. I said, bro, can you preach this meeting in February? He said, man, I'm, I'm booked. And I was like, oh, okay, I guess I didn't hear from God. And so I thought, well, I'll call a few other preachers. And I called a few others, and they all said no. And I was thinking, well, maybe God don't want us to have this meeting. So I prayed about it, and I was like, that guy better answer this call. So I called him, and he said, dude, I was literally going to call you today. He said, God told me I'm supposed to be there. It says ordained of God. And the fact that you're here is ordained of God. You may think, oh, I got here on my own. No, God draw you, drew you here. No man can come except he draws him. You're here, and you're, you're here, so you might as well get whatever you're needing. There's miracle healings, financial blessings, chains broken, addictions broken. Every preacher has got up and said it. But like Brother Matthias said, when the preaching goes forth, you got to respond. The ball's in your court. And so when he gets up here, he walks in the Holy Ghost. If he starts calling stuff out, don't get upset. Because God's using him. He spoke to me several times in the Holy Ghost. Spoke to my brother last night in the Holy Ghost. We're here to serve the King of Kings. And God has arranged for Brother Bo Deathridge to be here. And I'm thankful. Come and preach. You got, he's got full liberty. I ain't going to tell him to sit down or nothing. He just preach and tear it up. Why don't you clap your hands to the Lord all over this house? Come on. Do you really love Jesus? The Bible said, praise him according to his excellent greatness. I wonder if your level of praise matches his level of excellence and greatness in your life. Right now, all together, in unison, could you lift your voice? I think every man has said it that has stepped to this pulpit tonight. There are miracles in this building. I'll say it again. There are miracles. And the enemy doesn't want you to leave with your miracle. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. There are things at work in this room that don't want us to have absolute liberty in the Holy Ghost. Anxiety can be delivered. Anxiety can lift off of you in this service tonight. You don't have to leave 
living paralyzed by the anxiety that has ruled your life to this night. If you need a miracle, every eye closed, every head bowed, every eye closed. If you need a miracle, we're not limiting God. But if you need a miracle, whatever it is, financial, healing, an incurable disease, anxiety, depression, fear, whatever you need. If you need a miracle, would you lift your hands all over this room right now? If you need a miracle. Now, would you pray in faith? The gift of faith is in this room. According to your faith, be it unto you. Come on, pray in the Holy Ghost right now for just a moment. Cancer can be healed tonight. Back pain can be healed tonight. Whatever you need is in this room. God, do everything you want to do in this room tonight. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. There's no program but a move of the Holy Ghost. There's no agenda but a move of the Holy Ghost. God, do everything you want to do. I don't care how long you've had to live with it. Tonight you can leave with your miracle. Tonight you can leave with your deliverance. <laughs> Scripture tells that Janice and Jane Breeze Pastor Leckenby, they withstood Moses. I'm begging and pleading with a few in this room right now to cut out the nonsense, cut out the laughing, cut out the talking. If you're not here for a move of God, I'm asking you kindly to leave this building. We fought enough hell. There's been enough distractions. There's been enough attacks for you to come in here and try to, oh, preacher, I'm not, no, no, no. By your cutting up, talking, laughing, and messing around, you're withstanding. You're doing your best to withstand. I'm asking you, if you're not going to cut it out, please leave. There's people in this room that are desperate for a miracle. The Holy Ghost is going to fall in this room. The Holy Ghost is going to minister. God is going to do everything he wants to do. Right now, would you lift your hands? And by you staying in this room, I'm trusting you're done with standing. You're done cutting up. And would you release a sound with your voice? And would you praise God? do everything you want to do in this room. Have your way. Have your way. Reach down into the most hardened heart and do a work. Reach down into the hypocrite and do a work. Reach down into the backslider and heart and do a work. Acts chapter 16. It is a high honor and a privilege to be here tonight. I give honor to Pastor and Sister Leckenby, close, close friends of ours who have ministered to us at dark times in our life and to this great church, ministered to us in a dark season just a couple years ago. And we're doing what we're doing tonight because of the sacrifices of this church and this couple. And we give them high honor. Their children, wonderful family. Rock Tabernacle, you're blessed. And I know the heartbeat of this man. He's not, he's not hosting this to build himself a kingdom. He's sacrificing to host this. And I believe what God is going to do in all of this fellowship, I give honor to all of these great men. I don't know you, but look forward to getting to know you. 
And I just believe there's revival to be had and there's revival to be harnessed in this region. My beautiful wife is here on her birthday. She came to church on her birthday. And uh, she has to suffer through hearing me preach again, but we'll try to make it up to her. And uh, the Leckenbees decorated the room for her where we're staying and uh, have made it a special weekend already. I believe the Lord wants to do something great in this house. Acts chapter 16, verse number 9. And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. And let me just pause and say this. He still reveals secrets to his prophets. There stood a man of Macedonia. This is what Paul sees in the night. There stood a man of Macedonia and prayed him, saying, Come over into Macedonia and help us. How many need the Holy Ghost to help you tonight? And after he had seen the vision, immediately... The response to the call is always an immediate response. Immediately we endeavored to go into Macedonia, assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us for to preach the gospel unto them. Drop down with me if you would to verse number 22. Keep in mind, Paul has a vision. He's got direction. He's got a call of where to go. Verse number 22, and the multitude rose up together against them. And the magistrates rent off their clothes and commanded to beat them. When they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely, who having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. For the next few moments, I want to preach, reach with everything I've got on this thought. When the results don't match the vision. When the results don't match the vision. Would you put your Bibles down? Would you lift your hands? One more time in unison, would you lift your voice in this house? There's such a strong anointing in this room. There's no telling what's going to happen here tonight. Stand, stand for just a moment. I, I, I want us to do something. There is a door of the miraculous. There's a door of the supernatural that is open to the church. We've been seeing it. We, we, we saw it. We've been in revival in Redlands, California. And Sunday night, there were two notable miracles. Tuesday night, we were preaching in Fresno, California. There was a man, Elder Johnson, who was sitting at home watching on the live stream. And it was a service somewhat like this where the Holy Ghost, the miraculous, began to move. He texted the pastor before service was over. He said, I've been laid up with a pinched nerve and bulged disc. I'm in bed, haven't been able to walk. He said, but when you guys had an altar call, I lifted my hands and said, I believe. And the Holy Ghost touched that man and the Holy Ghost healed him immediately. Miracles are in this room tonight. This is what I want us to do before we move forward and we get into the word. The Bible said he sent his word and healed them. Anytime the miraculous is going to operate, there's got to be repentance. We've got to clear the way for the miraculous and the supernatural. And this is what I want us to do. I want us all over this house. You say, well, preacher, I'm, I've prayed today already. I'm, I've done a good job. No, David said, cleanse me from secret faults. Keep back thy servant from presumptuous sin. I want us as a body right now to collectively repent because I'm to, I don't have to finish this message tonight. I'm more interested in the Holy Ghost than impressing you. And I wonder, I just believe if we'll repent right here, right now, before we get into the word, that the wind of the Holy Ghost is going to blow in this room right now. Would you repent all over this room? 
God, would you forgive us of our sins? Would you cleanse us, oh God, of all unrighteousness? Cleanse us, oh God, from all filthiness. Cleanse us, oh God. Come on. We're making room. We're making way for the miraculous to, to be unleashed in this room. Miracle signs and wonders can happen in this room. Now, would you clap your hands and shout unto God before you're seated? Praise God. God bless you. You can be seated. It truly is an honor to stand before this great congregation here and the fellowship that is represented here tonight. And I was speaking with a friend of mine this afternoon, and I said, man, I'm, I'm, I've never planted a church. I've never started a church. And I've been praying, God, what can we do? How can we be a blessing I cannot instruct on how to build a church like some can because I've never done it. It's like a, a person who's never raised a kid trying to tell you how to raise your kid. It just it's tinkling brass. It it doesn't it doesn't ring true. And I did it before I had kids. I thought I had all the answers figured out. And then when I had kids, I thought, oh my God, I wish I could apologize to everybody that I thought I had the answers for. I'm not here tonight as the answer man to help you grow your church and, and do, do what you're doing. But I do feel a mandate from the Holy Ghost to strengthen and encourage this fellowship. And interestingly enough, I feel a burden to, to preach to the ministry that is here. You say, well, then I'm just going to check out. I'm just going to tune out. No, because each and every one of us that are filled with the Holy Ghost have a calling. We're called to be saints. We're called to be faithful. We're called to be a witness. Every person in this room with breath in your body has a purpose. You've got a calling. When you're filled with the Holy Ghost, that's not the only call you respond to, the call to be saved, but that's the first call that you respond to. But everyone in this room has been called to be a witness. And each and every one of us, I believe, have dreams and desires to be used by God and to do something for the kingdom. Anybody want to see the kingdom move forward? Anybody want to see souls saved in your church? We're not here to warm up you. We're not here for us for and no more. But we want Book of Acts revival. We want to see the kingdom expand. So it is to all of us here tonight, no matter what your role is in ministry at this time, because I believe Pastor Leckenby in this room tonight are future evangelists, home missionaries, foreign missionaries, pastors, church planners. In this room are Sunday school superintendents. In this room are bus drivers. In this room are mechanics. In this room are ushers. In this room are piano players. In the, we've all got a purpose and we've all got a call, but somewhere along the way, we got to push through the struggles. We we gotta push through the setbacks. We gotta push through the pressure. And that's what I feel a mandate to minister to to this great host of people here tonight. The pressure, the torment, the frustration, the turmoil, the anxiety that is visiting every man of God and woman of God that desires to do something for God. Nobody's exempt. From the enemy pushing back when you step out and the moment you step out you say well I've been doing this a long time and I've never fought what I'm fighting that's what we've come to preach to tonight and I'm preaching to this great group of people when the results don't match the vision go with me to Acts chapter 16 verse number 1 we're going to just we're going to just dive off into this and I want I, I'm going to preach the word because it's the word that breaks like a hammer and I don't want you leaving saying, oh, that preacher just played on our emotions and he hyped us up. No, no, we're going to go straight to the word here tonight. Yeah. Acts 16, verse number 1. Then came he to Derby and Lystra. Behold, a certain disciple was there named Timotheus, the son of a certain woman which was a Jewess and believed his father. But his father was a Greek, which was well reported of. Timothy had a good reputation. He was well reported of by the brethren that were at Lystra and Iconium. Him would Paul have to go forth with him. Now, now Paul had been here five years before on his first missionary journey. 
And he had established the churches that he's visiting in this text where we, we start off with. And they believe that in, that in that time when he established these churches, he, he connected with Timothy. Five years goes by. He comes back and he chooses Timothy to go with him. You know the story. Barnabas and Paul have a little issue because a fellow bailed on their missionary journey. But man of God, you hear me. Every time somebody walks out the door and every time somebody leaves, God's going to have a Timothy that's going to fill in the gap. Don't get frustrated on those that leave. Don't get frustrated and focused on those that walk out. God will have a Timothy. When Mark, when John Mark decides I'm not going, there'll be a Timothy that'll be provided somewhere. And took him and circumcised him because of the Jews which were in those quarters. For they all knew that his father was a Greek. And as they went through the cities, they delivered them the decrees for to keep that were ordained of the apostles and elders which were at Jerusalem. And so were the churches established in the faith. That's what this meeting is all about. It's about strengthening the body. It's about strengthening every church that is represented and those that couldn't make it. But it is about strengthening the churches in this region and strengthening them in the faith and so that we can follow up with what the scripture says. The Bible said they didn't just stop, Pastor Luckenby, at strengthening one another. They didn't just stop at breaking of bread and and having powwows and meeting together and and, and, and beating their head around the table and brainstorming new ideas. No, 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 they didn't stop there. The Bible said they were established in the faith and increased in number daily. You know what the will of God is for every church represented here is over 2023, you increase in number. Over 2023, you blow out the walls of your church. You push out the back wall. You buy property. You build a bit. Increase daily. And one of the ways we're able to increase is we got to strengthen one another. When I'm down, I need you to help me. We all need one. You know what we need a revival of? Is we need a revival of restoring one another. We need a revival of helping one another. We got enough of us sitting in the lazy boy. Surfing all the churches on Sunday afternoon to see who messed up and who goofed up and what can you believe they did this and and I wish we'd get rid of all the video cameras to be honest. But we need a revival of strengthening and encourage one another instead of tearing one another down. It's easy for me to sit in the lazy boy and say, well, if I was behind the pulpit, I would have done, oh, he missed it. Oh, she missed it. Oh, they said, no, no. You know what we need to do? We need to pray one for another that God sends revival to every church in this region, that God sends unprecedented revival. We need to strengthen one another and believe in one another and push one another. You know what the outreach endeavor was that Elder Johnson talked about? It was establishing the churches in faith and so we could increase in number. God's interested in his house being filled. He's not interested in us being passive and waiting on the next trend. He said, get out to the highways, the byways, and compel them. You know, when they had gone throughout Ferga in the region of Galatia, watch this. They were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia. Paul is seeking the mind and the will of God. It's imperative, Elder Johnson, that we don't start relying on our talent. That we don't start relying on our education. That we don't start relying on our lights and our screens and our and I'm all for it and it's we we gotta have it it's it's got its place but we better be careful that we're not relying on all of that and we stop listening to the voice of the Lord it's imperative if we're gonna increase in number we gotta be spirit led if we're gonna increase in number we gotta know when He says you pull over and knock on that door. We got to know when he says, don't go to that McDonald's, go to this McDonald's, because there's somebody there you're going to witness to, and they're going to bring 20 people. 
So he's, de- he's, he's rejected once. Yeah. Have a place to go. But he submitted to the Holy Ghost and not his own will. We've got to be sensitive to the Holy Ghost and not rely on our intellect if we're going to see our churches grow. So the Holy Ghost says, no, bro, you're not going there. And I imagine Paul said, what? Why do I, this would make, this makes sense. I'm, just, I'm wanting to preach the word. I want to see where his motives were pure, Elder Johnson. His motives were right. He had already, he had a proven track record. He wanted to see revival. And the Holy Ghost said, no, you're not going there. Verse number seven, after they were come to Mysia, they essayed to go or they attempted, they tried to go into Bithynia. But the Spirit suffered them not. He's rejected again. Well, if pastor would just cut me loose and let me go. And the Spirit's saying, no, not yet. Well, he don't understand. I feel to go to, no, not yet. It's not always open doors, and I believe it. I, I, I believe there's an open door. We're probably going to preach more about it here tonight. But it's not always the open doors we got to look for. We've got to pay attention to the closed doors as well. Because Pastor let can be the moment I start pressing and manipulating and the moment I start pushing on the door and the moment I don't know because if I get through that door on my own, I'm not going to have the anointing to deal with the setbacks. I won't have the anointing to deal with the trouble and the hell that I'm going to have to fight. I want to be spirit led and I want to go when he says go and I want to stay when he says stay. So Paul He's feeling after the Lord. He's, he's, he's got good intentions. He wants to see revival. But he's listening to what the Holy Ghost is saying. And they passing by Mysia came down to Troas. And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. Paul was familiar with visions. He was the dude they called Saul. The Bible said a vision knocks him off the horse. This dude starts out seeing things I'm asking begging God to see. Paul was familiar with visions. A vision appeared to Paul in the night. There stood a man of Macedonia and prayed him saying, come over into Macedonia and help us. And after he had seen the vision, immediately we endeavored to go into Macedonia. Assuredly gathering. If you're going to step out, you better be able to say you're assured that the Holy Ghost has released you to do what you're stepping out to do. Assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us for to preach the gospel unto them. Therefore, loosing from Troas, these guys don't waste any time. We came with a straight course to Samothracia and the next day to Neapolis and from thence to Philippi, which is the chief city of that part of Macedonia and a colony And we were in that city abiding certain days. What city? The city that the Holy Ghost gave them the green light to go to. And on the Sabbath, we went out of the city by a riverside where prayer was wont to be made. And we sat down and spake unto the women which resorted thither. And a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple of the city of Thyatira, which worshiped God, heard us, whose heart the Lord opened up. I believe there's hearts in this building tonight that you're opened up. If you need the Holy Ghost, you could repent of your sins and you could receive the gift of the Holy Ghost tonight by evidence of speaking in other tongues. Whose heart the Lord opened that she attended unto the things which were spoken of Paul. And when she was baptized and her household, she besought us saying, you know, this, this is just the way my mind works in studying this today. Paul in his vision, he saw a man. But he meets Lydia by the riverside. I don't know what some of you scholars can tell me after church what all that means. There's something that's got to get on us that it doesn't matter who's interested in this gospel. 
It doesn't matter if they're the bum. It doesn't matter if they're the addict. It doesn't matter if they're the town drunk. It doesn't matter if it's not the one you want. Because when we go after the ones nobody wants, God starts bringing in the ones everybody wants. Don't thumb your nose as somebody who's not put together. Everybody in this world needs the gospel message. Paul was probably tripping out. He's looking for a dude. He meets Lydia and there's something there. Elder Johnson, I believe he picked up. He discerned her hunger. He discerned her spirit. He said, okay, God, we're fixing to start preaching right now. And when she was baptized and her household, she besought us saying, if you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, Come into my house and abide there. And she constrained us. And it came to pass as we went to prayer. Prayer is still the vehicle that brings us the revival and the supernatural and the morale. We don't need less prayer. We need more prayer. God forbid we do away with pre-service prayer and then come in and try to manufacture and manipulate the Holy Ghost. No, no, no. When we're on our way to prayer, there's no telling what will happen when you step out of a prayer room. Miracles, signs, and wonders. They met Lydia when they're by a riverside making prayer. These guys are on their way to prayer. And a certain damsel possessed with the spirit of divination, met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. The same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High, which show unto us the way of salvation. Our city's got to know where they can turn to. First off, they ought to know that Rock Tabernacle is a place I can go. They ought to know this house is a house where I can be delivered. I can be healed. I can be set free. The same followed Paul. These men are the servants of the Most High, which show unto us the way of salvation. And this she did many days. But Paul being grieved. One translation says he was fed up. He was annoyed with this chick. Sometimes you got to get fed up. With everything that's pressing against you. You got to get, there's things, shaka. there's things that are following some of you. You're doing your best to do the will of God. You're doing your best to follow the spirit. And you've got baggage. And you've got a past. And you've got mistakes. And you've got failures that are following you. But tonight the Holy Ghost wants to loose you of that. And wants to release you into the ministry. The gifts and callings of God are without repentance. Paul gets up. He gets fed up. He's frustrated. He's annoyed. He looks at this woman. He doesn't address her, but he speaks to the spirit. I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. And when her masters saw that the hope of their gains was gone, they caught Paul and Silas. Remember, Paul's here on a vision. Remember, Paul has made his trip to Macedonia because he's gone on a word from God. And not just a word, but he saw there was a man that called out, said, hey, come on, we need some help. We need you to bring us the gospel. And Paul is functioning on the vision. And he's met with this woman that's possessed. Can I tell you the name of Jesus is still greater than any demon possession. The name of Jesus is greater. Brought these men to the magistrates saying, these men being Jews, they were drastically wrong to exceedingly trouble our city and teach customs which are not lawful. It's interesting how the enemy will manipulate your mission. Because the Macedonian call said, come help us. But the enemy says, that preacher over there at Rock Tabernacle, he's in this town and he's stirring up all kinds of trouble. 
Be careful the voices you listen to as you're endeavoring to answer the call. Because if you're not careful, you'll allow the enemy to cause you to back off. Uh, and you'll allow the enemy to say, okay, maybe I'm not supposed to be. No, no, no. But Paul's here on a vision. Paul, I know the results aren't there yet. Paul, I know you're not seeing the revival. You were seeing in the vision. But Paul, you got to hold on when you don't see results. Hey, man of God, don't quit. Hey, man of God, don't resign. Hey, man of God, don't leave your city. God brought you there. And for a reason, just hold on. Lift your hands all over this house right now. The Holy Ghost just spoke a direct word to some man of God in this room. You've been beating your head against the wall. You've been frustrated. You've been contemplating pulling up and leaving town. God brought you there. I know there's no results, but stay with the vision. So the enemy is writing the narrative for these guys portraying that they're the ones troubling the city. They teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe being Romans. And the multitude, I'm preaching when the results don't match the vision. And the multitude rose up together against them. And the magistrates ran off their clothes and commanded to beat them. I'm reaching for a man of God in this room that it seems like everything in your world has rose up against you. Friends, family, confidants, men you trusted in. It seems like everything in your world has rose up against you. You've got dreams, you've got visions, you've got words, you've got prophecies. But nothing's lining up with any of those. These men could have easily thrown in the towel and gave in right here because it was just the first of many afflictions. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into the prison. Remember, Paul's here on a vision. Paul's here because he was sensitive to the Holy Ghost. Ooh, if God loved me, why are we going through all these setbacks? If God cared, if God called me, why am I not seeing results? If God called me, why is everybody turning against me? If God called me here, why is there no provision? I'm prophesying to somebody right now, you're about to go home, and there's going to be provision for the vision that God has given you. They put them in inner prison and they charged the jailer to keep them safely who having received such a charge thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. And you read that out, Pastor Leckie and you studied out the position they put those stocks, them boys were real uncomfortable. But he's there on a vision. He's there because he was sensitive to the Holy Ghost. And suddenly, and at midnight, everybody shout midnight. midnight. Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. I'm preaching to people in this room. I'm preaching to faithful saints of God. You're faithful. You're, we can count on you to be there. But the setbacks and the pressure and the frustration and the torment and the turmoil has robbed you of your praise and your worship. We don't wonder, Elder Johnson, if you're going to be there. But we do wonder when you come if you're going to lift your hands and you're going to lift your voice and you're going to respond and you're going to worship or are you going to sit there and allow the atmosphere of what you're dealing with outside these four walls to dictate your response when you come into God's house. Paul and Silas, not a single one of us would have judged them if they would have sat there like some of us sat here tonight. They're bound up. The vision, we must have missed it, Silas. I must have missed God. Woo. 
shakatayala bokoto. Man of God, quit saying that to your wife. Quit saying that to your wife. You didn't miss God. You didn't miss it. There's just something right here, right now, that the enemy's doing everything he can to stop the revival that's been promised. And if you quit right now, you'll never arrive at the fulfillment of the vision. But I wonder what would break loose in your city if you would praise God in spite of the setback. I wonder what would break loose if you would give God a praise. My God, it's moving in this room right now. He kind of shot. Deliverance is here. Deliverance is here. For 30 seconds, would you praise God with everything you got? Oh, I know the atmosphere looks hopeless. I know it looks like you miss God, but praise him anyway. Don't ever allow what you're fighting to rob you of your worship and your praise. I had a man in the church I'm from, Fresno, California, Elder Von Morton's church. I was a struggling teenager, like some here tonight. And I slipped out of service right away before service was over. I slipped out. And he caught me in the parking lot. And he said, I'm praying for you. I believe in you. You're going to make it. And he said something to me I've never forgotten. He said, you can lose a lot of things. He said, but don't ever lose your worship. So well, all you preachers just want is response. And look, the guys that want it for them, that, that, that's obvious what they, but there's men of God. These men of God represented here, they're interested in the move of God. They're not interested in puffing up their ego. They're not interested in you singing their praises. But we understand that no matter what outside, no matter what's happening outside, what you do when you come into God's house will determine whether the bonds and the chains and the shackle, I'm telling you, strongholds are going to be broken tonight. Night, strongholds will be broken. Praise him, praise him, praise him. I know you can't lift your hands, I know you can't move your feet, I know you can't dance, but praise him. I'm hurrying, I'm preaching too long. They sang and praised so loud. Everybody in the prison heard them. And suddenly. Everybody shout suddenly. suddenly. There's a suddenly that's going to happen in this room for many. If you'll release the faith, you're suddenly is in this room. I rebuke every spirit of doubt and unbelief and criticism and judgmental Pharisee spirits. I bind you. I loose the gift of faith to operate in this room. Miracles, miracles, deliverance. Suddenly. There was an earthquake. We've seen pictures of what earthquakes do to buildings. Why didn't it collapse and kill them all? Because the miraculous is never what you think it will be. You can't control the miraculous. You can't explain the miraculous. Suddenly, there was a great earthquake. So that the foundations of the prison were shaken. If foundations were shaken, everything around them should have collapsed. And immediately, this is how we know the building didn't collapse. Because doors were open. You don't need doors to open if the building's collapsed. Behold, I've set before thee an open door. An effectual. It's wide, it's active, it's powerful. It's a door of the miraculous. It's a door of the supernatural. But only those that are willing to praise and sing and worship are going to be the ones to experience earthquakes with no damage to the building. (laughs) 
Immediately. Everybody shout immediately. immediately. We've got suddenly. We've got immediately. Notice how God responds to those who respond immediately to him. Paul immediately got on a ship, headed to Macedonia. He didn't waste time. He didn't pray and fast. He didn't, and listen, you got to do all that to get there, first of all. You got to do all that for him to start speaking to you. And you got to pray and fast to be sensitive. But when he speaks, you don't have time to argue. You don't have time to reason. All you got to do is pack your bags and get on a boat and go after the vision. Immediately, all the doors were open. And everyone's bands were loosed. Praying in this building late last night, the Holy Ghost spoke to me and said, there's going to be strongholds destroyed. Oh, you see that? You see that right there? You feel that right there? The enemy is afraid. Hell is trembling. But the stronghold of your city can be obliterated. The stronghold over your family can be obliterated. The stronghold of anxiety can be disintegrated by the power of the Holy Ghost. And the keeper of the prison waking out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open. Most likely this was the dude that laid the many stripes on him. He's awakened out of sleep. He sees the prison doors open. He draws out his sword. He's ready to commit suicide. Supposing the prisoners had been fled. Now if that was me, I'd have been gone. But there was something in Paul and Silas that said this prison, all of this is, to, is connected to the mission and the vision. Jesus was moved to action by compassion. And Paul and Silas knew, they understood, if we dip, this guy's going to pay our punishment. Because for those jailers, if their prisoner escaped, they had to pay the price that the prisoner had to pay. God baptize us with a fresh love for our communities. God baptize us. Love still worketh faith. Love is still what unlocks the miraculous. Love. God baptize us with a love for our city. So they're like, bro, don't commit suicide. It's not worth it. Paul cried with a loud voice, do thyself no harm. We're all here. We didn't go nowhere. Then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas. Some people like to critique this and say, well, we don't see Paul teaching him repentance. No, he fell down. That's a sign he had a repentant heart. You let an earthquake happen and everybody gets cut loose and doors open and you'll be repentant too. Paul and Silas brought him down and said, he said to Paul and Silas, sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, believe on the Lord. This isn't a blab it and grab it, name it and claim it, cheap grace. The man was already repentant. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved, comma, and thy house. Visitor friend, you may not understand everything that's happening in this room, but if you'll repent of your sins and you'll allow the Holy Ghost, you'll yield to what you feel in this room and you'll allow the Holy Ghost to come in. It'll be the saving not just of you, but of your entire house. It'll be the sa- It still breaks cycles. It still breaks generational curses. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord and to all that were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night, washed their stripes. The dude that beat them to a bloody pulp is now restoring them. The gospel will always change you. True repentance will cause you to turn. It's not repentance if you don't turn. There's churches all over our communities we can go to and we don't have to turn. We don't have to put the cigarettes down. We don't have to put the bottle down. We don't have to quit living an immoral life. But when you repent, there will be a turning away from your sin and a turning to God. They baptized him in his house. And when he had brought them into his house, 
he set meat before them and rejoiced, believing in God with all his house. You can be seated. And when it was day, these dudes go back to prison. Yep. Homie, I'd have been out of town so fast. Yep. And when it was day, the magistrates sent the sergeant saying, let those men go. They cared more about the soul of the jailer than they did, than they did their comfort. They cared more about fulfilling the vision than they did skipping town and trying to go start over somewhere else. And the keeper of the prison told this saying to Paul, the magistrates have sent to let you go. Now therefore depart and go in peace. I'm preaching when the results don't match the vision. None of this was in the vision when the Macedonian call went forth. But Paul said unto them, they have beaten us openly, uncondemned, being Romans. They thought they were Jews. And have cast us into prison. And now do they thrust us out privately? Nay, verily. But let them come themselves and fetch us out. And the sergeants told these words unto the magistrates. And they feared when they heard that they were Romans. And they came and besought them and brought them out and desired them to depart out of the city. They, they shamed them. They humiliated them publicly. But when they understood these dudes weren't who they thought they were. And they understood the Roman law could come down. They wanted to get them out of town quick. But notice where they go. Verse number 40. And they went out of the prison. They're here on a vision. They're here on a word from God. And entered into the house of Lydia. And when they had seen the brethren. The Bible said there was women gathered by the riverside. But that tells me that while these boys were in prison, evangelism was happening. They increased in number daily. I don't know how many days these dudes were gone. But when they come out, it's not just women in their church, but there's some dudes there. It's not just women, but there's more. It's not the same group they left when they got thrown in prison. But Lydia and her house and all those women that were, they've been doing evangelism. They've been winning souls. They've been, it's still the will of God to fulfill the great commission and increase in number. They go through all they go through, questioning whether they heard from God. Questioning whether this was all worth it for one woman by the riverside. But when they come out of the trouble, when they come out of the prison, they go to Lydia's house. And I'm preaching to people in this room. And I'm not just preaching to ministry, but I'm preaching to every single one of us that got a call of God on our life. And I'm preaching to people that your atmosphere, your current set of circumstances, what you're up against does not match the vision and the call that went forth when God called you and commissioned you. I was speaking this afternoon to a pastor not too far from here, a close friend of mine. And he was telling me of things that have happened in the last four or five days, heart attack, chest pain, miscarriage, all in his church, all kinds of tragedies and setbacks that weren't in the vision when God called him to go there. And there's people in this room that you're facing things that you didn't see coming. Psalm 107 said they stagger to and fro like a drunken man. They're not drunk. They've just got so much opposition that it's brought them to their wit's end. And the Holy Ghost showed me that I'm here tonight to preach to people that you're at your wit's end and you're fixing to make a decision that'll forfeit the vision. 
if you respond how you want to respond, it will cause you to forfeit every word of prophecy and every promise that God has given over your city. And there's people, there's faithful saints of God in this room that you've been called to do things in your local church and there's money problems and there's marriage problems and there's kid problems and there's issues and suicide has attacked your home and demons from hell are walking through your home and it's causing you to want to give up and it's causing you to want to quit. But can I preach to somebody when the results aren't lining up with the vision? It's not a time to quit. It's not a time to give up. It's a time to throw your hands up and give God a praise. You've not given him in a long time. Praise still defeats the strongholds. In Acts 26, you can be seated. In his testimony to King Agrippa, he's testifying of his conversion, Pastor Leckenby. He declares to Agrippa, Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision. This is Paul's conversion. This is his vision of conversion. But there was something in this man from this first encounter, from this first vision, he realized the blessing of obedience to the vision. Listen, if you pull up stakes now, you're going to be disobedient to the heavenly vision. If you jump ship now, if you quit, if you go to your pastor and say, I'm just not willing, I'm just not ready, I'm just not able to be a part of the music department, I'm just not able to sing anymore, I'm not able to usher, I'm not able to drive the van, I'm not able to knock the door, no, no, you better not be disobedient unto the heavenly vision, but you fulfill that no matter the setback, no matter the pressure, no matter the hell, no matter the chaos, endure the affliction and fulfill the vision John 4 35 say not ye there are yet four months listen to me if I want to scream anything to this region right now, I pray that the Holy Ghost would light a fire of passion and intensity. We don't have time to delay. We don't have time to sit back. We don't have time to spend our time brainstorming idea. We got to get in the field and we got to work it. The harvest is ready. He's about to come back. Don't say you got time. You don't have time. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes. You know why we need deliverance? You know why strongholds need to be broken? You know why anxiety needs to be dealt with tonight? It's because you can't lift up. You can't lift up when you're beat down. And the spirits of hell are ruling your emotions. You can't reap the harvest that's been placed in your hands when you're up and down like a yo-yo and an emotional roller coaster. And every day, you don't know how it's going to turn. No, no, no. There's something that's got to break in this room tonight. And when you go home tomorrow, you go home looking for a soul to witness to. You go home and you call every prodigal. You say, come home. We're running out of time. Lift up your eyes. It's revival time. They're white. All ready to harvest. Literally, it means they're ripe. And in fact, they're almost past ripe. That's why we don't have time to dilly dally around with the call of God. There's got to be an immediate response to the vision. And some of us have allowed the cares of life to cause us to back off of the vision and the mission. And we put it in neutral. And we're just being driven by everything that life throws our way. We're just coasting along. Whatever happens, happens. That's not the will of God. The will of God is to be strengthened, established in the faith. And increase in number. Daily. He 
He's the Lord of the harvest. One plants, one waters. But we've all got to gather. He that reapeth receiveth wages and gathereth fruit unto life eternal. And both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. Quit scrolling through Instagram and Facebook and YouTube. Trying to find something to criticize your brother about. If Pastor let can be praised through 20 on Sunday morning, every pastor ought to send him a text and say, we rejoice with you. If Elder Johnson baptizes 25 in the next week, every pastor ought to text him and say, I want what's happening at your place. Anybody want revival at all costs? That means we got to love and we got to rejoice with one another. Herein is that saying true, one soweth. And another reapeth. I sent you to reap. Who's talking? This is the Lord of the harvest that's talking. I sent you to reap. He sent a vision to Paul. But the things that Paul endured were nowhere in the vision. We all shout and dance about revival. But what we do and how we respond to the affliction and the oppression and the setbacks and the hell that gets unleashed on our churches is he's the one that sent you there. And he said, I sent you to reap that whereon ye bestowed no labor. Other men labored and ye are entered into their labors. That's why in our churches we've got to have unity like never before. There's people, Elder Johnson, they can sit at home in their recliner and they can pray while the younger generation can go knock doors and pass out flyers and while others can make phone calls maybe because they got some ailment and while others get in the van on Sunday morning and go pick them up but it's not the will of God for us to be fighting and bickering over who's the greatest and who's doing the most for revival no one plants one waters we all gather but God gives the increase stand with me all over the house musicians please come When the results don't match the vision, you've got to remind yourself you were sent by God. When you've got nothing left to lean on, you've got to go back to that word. You've got to go back to that vision. Elder Johnson, how long have you been pastor? 21 years, there's a lot of water under that bridge. There's a lot of life. There's a lot of setbacks. There's a lot of death. There's a lot of rejection. There's a lot of ostracizing. There's a lot of backbiting. There's a lot of bitterness. There's a lot of hurt. There's a lot of rumors. There's a lot of lies. 21 years, a lot comes and a lot goes. But there wouldn't be a church tonight in Ogden, Utah, if a man of God, when all hell broke loose, wouldn't have held on to that word. Somebody needs to go back to that last word. You're looking for a new door to open. He's he's saying go back. Go back to that last word. And establish it. Solidify it. Strengthen it. One place I believe in Hebrews, he said, settle it therefore in your heart. You know what needs to happen tonight? Somebody needs to settle it in your mind that come hell or high water, no matter what happens, no matter what I go home to Monday morning, no matter what blows up in my face, it's settled in my heart. God called, God sent, and I'm not leaving, but I'm going to do my best to see revival happen. Don't make a decision when the results aren't lining up with the vision that will cause you to forfeit the harvest.
We get to Revelation 2. And we read. The doors open. Hear me loud and clear. It's been said multiple times tonight. But the doors open in this house tonight. Anything can happen in this room. We get to Revelation 2. Letters are being written to the pastors. And we read. And unto the angel of the church in Thyatira, write. I submit to you that if Paul and Silas would have gave up on the vision when they were stripped naked and beat to a bloody pole, if they would have gave up on the vision when they were thrust in prison, we would not read at the end of the book that there's a church still in Thyatira. All hell was cut loose. Every reason to quit was handed out, but there was something in these boys that said it doesn't matter if I'm looking for a man and I find a woman. It doesn't matter if I'm in prison. I'm going to be a light and I'm going to preach the gospel, but we get to the end and there's still a church in Thyatira. Man of God, I know the vision isn't nailing up. I know the results aren't there, but if you'll hold on, there's going to be a church. church established in Thyatira. There was a ministry fulfilled. There was a call answered. Keep on building. Keep on reaching. Keep on praying. Keep on fighting hell. Settle it therefore in your heart that no matter what, uh, saint of God, settle it therefore in your heart. Uh, it's not time to go somewhere where the grass looks greener on the other side. Uh, it's not time for you to jump ship uh, and go so settle it therefore in your heart. He said, I'll give you pastors uh, according to my heart. Uh, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. Somebody's about to make a move. Uh, it's going to cost you your anointing. Uh, it's going to cost you your destiny. Settle it in your heart. I'm not going anywhere until I see the vision fulfilled. I've done my best tonight to obey the Lord. And I feel so much faith in this room. Somebody tonight is going to visit some old landmarks. Old anointings can't destroy new yokes. And there's fresh anointing in this house for somebody that needs help. You need help destroying the yoke. I'm fixing to open this altar. I don't want you praying for anybody at first. I want you to find a place to pray for yourself for just a moment. We're going to give some instruction in a minute. But I want you to find a place to pray. There's strength in this room tonight for the journey. When the results don't match the vision, it's not time to quit. I say get ready to sing. I'm opening this altar. I want you to find a place to pray. Don't lay hands on anybody. Don't pray for nobody else. But I want us to pray for ourselves for just a moment. And I believe the supernatural, the miraculous is going to move in this house in a few moments. We're not in a hurry tonight. The most important thing right now is a move of God. As they begin to sing, would you find a place? And would you begin to pray in the Holy Ghost? There's not room down here. If you got to kneel in your seat, would you make this a house of prayer right now? Come on, man of God, don't give up. Come on, faithful saint of God, don't quit. Come on, faithful saint of God, don't quit. Come on, right now, pray for yourself. Gather strength for the journey. Something has to break. Something has to break. Tear down every lie. Set the wrong thing right. 
Come on, pray right now. Revisit that old landmark. Let that anointing fall on you, man of God. Don't quit. Don't give up. Something's got to break tonight. Come on, man of God. Tear down the facade. Tear down that you got it all together. Open up your spirit to what's in this room. There's a strength. There's an anointing. But you got to get real. You got to get transparent. I need help. I believe you'll get me through it. I believe you'll lead me to it. Right now, something has to break. I believe. 